Hi folks, this is Karim Rauf from the IT Visualizer channel. We will continue our lab, uh, the Star Trek lab. This is the third video. Okay, we have been discussing in the previous video the following. We have been discussing or we are, have been planning for this lab uh, to have IP version 6 uh, installed or uh, to be implemented in the lab and to have IP version 4 uh, beside it so we have IP version 4 and IP version 6 and I have showed you all the previous video how we can uh, make a simple uh, Excel sheet okay with the uh, uh, how we can have the subnet okay so in in a website you can give him the IP uh, it can be version 4 or version 5 to give him the subnet and he can calculate or tell you this subnet will begin from range uh, or the IP range of uh, so and ends uh, and ends at the IP range of so and you can give him a subnet and he can uh, divide it or uh, split it to uh, sub subnets okay so for example I need this uh, main subnet to be seven subnets okay and every subnet will begin from the IP range so and ends at the IP range so okay and as I said before we will have eight main subnets as they said here, here in the uh, graph you have eight subnets main subnets okay ip version 6 and eight main subnets uh, ip version 4 and every subnet will be divided to eight sub subnets okay and we have also said that in the graph we have said that maybe in your ship for example here we can i have discussed this before maybe in your ship you need to have uh, the main subnet and then you need to have sub subnets uh, a subnet for the computers a subnet for the TV a subnet for the IP telephone a subnet for the access points a subnet for the mobiles for your wireless internet so you make you can have a main subnet for every spaceship and then it can be divided to sub subnets for example this is the main subnet and then just a moment this is the main subnet okay and you can divide it to a subnet to be given to the computers in this ship and then uh, TVs for this ship and uh, uh, access points for example this is the main subnet 192.168.0.0 and this is a sub subnet 192.168.2 then 0 .3, 0 .4, 0 .5, 0 .6. I have discussed in the previous video how we can go to the website and fill off this excel sheet so we have a planned documentation or a, a document that we can work with it in the lab this this we have discussed in the previous video and the website i have showed you all how we can use some websites to help us to make this excel sheet okay and then we have uh, begin creating a hyper v internal switch I said before in the lab we will create a virtual switch and then we will call it IP version 6 switch okay this Hyper-V uh, switch will be used to put or to hook up all of our virtual uh, machines to this switch okay and then we have created a Hyper-V virtual machine and then we had added to it eight network cars for eight subnets as I said before we will have the DHCP installed on this virtual machine as well as the domain controller it's not a, bit a best practice to have domain controller and DHCP on the same server but as for my hardware limitation I will put them both in on the same server as for the lab and as also as this only is it is for the lab okay and the DHCP to uh, distribute eight different subnets to eight different ships here we can see the DHCP will dif dif d uh, distribute eight subnets uh, different subnets to eight different ships we need to have the DHCP to have attached to it eight network cards okay so we have created the virtual machine and then we have added ne eight network cards and then we uh, installed Windows Server 2019 on this virtual machine and we have give it a name and then we have begin uh, add adding IP version 4 and IP version 6 static IPs for the eight network cards because this server will be a domain controller and it contains eight network cards so the IP of the domain controller should be static so you will give him uh, because it has eight network cards attached will give him eight static uh, IP version 4 uh, uh, IPs and eight static IP version 6 uh, IPs okay if you can see here for example in this in this uh, graph we have said that this is the IPs 
0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0.2. This is eight static IP address for the uh, domain controller, and these are uh, static IP addresses version six for this domain controller. And in the upcoming videos, we will create another uh, domain controller, and we give it the same ranges. Okay, this will be our second domain controller, and it will work with the same ranges but of course it will be three four five okay it will be different range but this will be a backup this will be an additional domain controller for the uh, first domain controller this also will be a dhsp failover the second server will be a dhsp failover and it will be a dfs also failover which is distributed file system don't be a hurry we, we will discuss this in the upcoming videos and then after that we have created eight vlans and have discussed what is a vlan okay a vlan helps us to uh, uh, control or uh, to manage how the dhsp will give every computer in every, in every ship a certain ip address different from the other ship for example as we said before here in this graph for example if the dhsp for example a computer from deep deep space wants to get an ip address he will give him from this range okay and for example if the columbia computer uh, in uh, or a, sh a computer in columbia will uh, try to take an ip address from the hsp it will give him a different ip address even though all of these ships and the main or the starfleet command center are all on the same virtual switch to do this we will uh, uh, we have created a concept or we have uh, make something called vlan we have created eight vlans and assigned them assigned them to different network cards for the virtual machine we have discussed this also in the previous video then we prepare this virtual machine to be a domain controller and we will have on it a domain called star trick dot local this will be the domain and uh, for more info please refer to my uh, previous video and this is also the graph we have discussed it if you can see it in the previous video and discussed the vlan concept the uh, subnets concept and the whole diagram of the lab so in this video we will begin uh, installing the active directory domain services and then we will begin uh, uh, sorry the active directory domain services and then we will begin uh, promoting the server to be a domain controller so this will be our video so just a moment we will begin uh, working with the video this is the ibam just a moment ibam lab and this will be the second video and this will be the video so just here wait for a moment i need to uh, just pause the video for a moment so let's continue guys here we will begin so i need to know that i am recording yes here we will begin uh, the installation of the active directory uh, domain services here i have my domain controller uh, restarted what i have done now i have here i have uh, uh, right click this virtual machine and take a checkpoint because after doing all of i have done in the previous video from installing uh, different network cards giving them static ip addresses installing windows and different doing a lot of things so i am taking a checkpoint a checkpoint here it's something like taking a backup of the virtual machine okay in the physical world of course so we are taking a checkpoint uh, after every major change i have done to this server so i am taking a, a, a checkpoint by right click and then tell him checkpoint or from here you can tell him a checkpoint so this is a very good best practice if you have virtual machines in your environment and there is major changes to the system you need to take uh, a, a, a checkpoint after every major change to your uh, virtual machine okay so here this is the checkpoint and then we will tell him give it a name this is before i will name it before installing active directory <coughs> before active directory so this is a very best practice okay before installing uh, a critical windows update before installing a major upgrade to the windows all of this is a good practice to have a virtual so we have a checkpoint then we will tell him add roles and features okay open the server manager and then add roles and features server manager it's from the control panel administrative tools start control panel administrative tools then next here we can see that this server or this domain controller will have eight static ip addresses uh, 
version 4 and 8 static IP addresses version 6 for the 8 subnets okay, that we have so we will have an active directory domain services and then add features and then next and then next okay next and then we need to install the active directory domain services it will take a little bit of time and then after installing it we will promote this server to be a domain controller so here we'll promote this server and then we tell him to make a new forest okay and our domain and this new forest which is star trek local this server will be the first domain controller in this forest it's something like we have a building the building name is star trek local our server will be our first floor in this uh, building okay so star trek local it will be a new forest star trek local i've discussed all of the different uh, uh, active directory uh, options in previous uh, labs like DC Comics Lab and Mass Effect Lab and Marvel and DC Comics Lab please refer to them if you need to know in details what each of this uh, options mean so for example here we are making a new forest and this will be our f first domain in the forest okay which is Star Trek dot local domain and our server will be the first domain controller in the first domain in the first forest okay so here this will be uh, also not a domain controller it will be a dns server and it will be a global catalog server we have discussed this before and then we are putting a password for the directory service restore mode we have discussed before what is a directory service restore mode and then this uh, different uh, info concerning the domain it will have a net bios name of star trek this is a short uh, cut or it's uh, it's uh, a short name for star trek dot local so we can type the domain as star trek dot local or star trek only okay so you can use both okay so now it will take a little bit of time sorry i need to pass this uh, okay so here it's Star Trek and then next so it will take a little bit of time <coughs> we can pass it okay I will pass it real quickly but anyway so here this is the different uh, locations so the active directory will have a database location and it will have a log uh, it will log its uh, activity in uh, a, a, a location also and uh, the sysvol folder will be in a location here we can after doing all of this we can just here we can take a moment this is called script okay so you can what we are doing now uh, in this step the windows is giving you a script so you can use it to deploy the domain control automatically so so for example we don't need to open the server manager and then manage and then add roles and begin typing what we will do we will take this script and then we will open a powershell script and implement it for example he says that we will have uh, a domain called star trek local the domain name uh, it is uh, here is the location of the database of the uh, active directory and this is uh, a command to tell him to add forest this will be a first forest it will be a forest and then this is will be the first domain in this forest so all of this what we have done by clicking and uh, typing he is putting it in a script you can use it to implement it on another a server that you need to promote it to a domain controller but actually you need to change the uh, script if you need to modify it for example this is our first 
domain controller okay or this is the first domain in the first forest so if you are want to have an additional domain you need to change it to tell him to add this as an additional domain anyway if you need to repeat the process this is the powershell script to help you okay so we can take it and save it in a text file okay so we will save it so it's telling you it's windows powershell script for ad deployment so if you need to uh, repeat the process for example if maybe if this server has a problem and you need to repeat the process again so you can use the script and uh, save some time on clicking and typing okay this I here I am making a folder and put the script in it so I make a folder and create a text file in it or I will save it directly to this uh, to this uh, folder okay so now this is a script you can use it uh, in advance or you can use it later to uh, repeat the process okay next and then I said before the active directory will have uh, a database for it uh, to save all of the different active directory objects users computers and so on so and it will have and this is in a certain location in the windows folder it's in C windows or it's uh, in a location in the partition C that contains the operating system and also the logs for this active directory will also be stored in the C which contains the operating system and the sysvol folder okay this is something related to the active directory also it will be in the uh, C folder or oh, sorry the C partition which contains the operating system so now we are now uh, preparing or promoting this server to be a domain controller it will take a little bit of time and then we will tell him to install so after that it will tell us to restart the server and then the first step after uh, uh, making this okay or after promoting this server to be a domain controller we need to uh, first make a custom console and add the different uh, active directory uh, consoles in it we will add the active directory do, uh, do computers and users in console in this custom console and you will add the dns console and the dhcp console all of this will be added to a custom console so we can access everything from only one console and we will begin creating the dns reverse lookup zones for the different uh, subnets that we have okay we have said before that the reverse DNS or the DNS is its uh, function is to uh, translate the name of the PC to its IP address okay and the reverse lookup zone or the DNS reverse lookup zone it is the opposite uh, the opposite it is uh, or its function is to translate the IP of the uh, uh, PC to its name okay some guys says or some documents say that the reverse dns lookup zone it is not that critical and you don't need to uh, create it but anyway i create it uh, it's it's not uh, a big deal so we now we will have we will create our reverse lookup zones but before that we will uh, create a custom console okay we will type mmc and then we will create a custom console and put all of our different uh, active directory uh, uh, or our uh, uh, server console so we will add here the active directory users and computers console we will add the dns console we will add different consoles in this custom console so we can manage everything from one place okay so here i am adding the active directory users and computers we can have this custom console by right click and run or start run and then type mmc now we are adding the active directory users and computers cast uh, console and then we're adding the dns console and the group policy and management console and the uh, okay we have another thing we have services if you need if some services are on on this server is not working so we have the services console and we have our disk management console added to manage the hard disks of the server and uh, the computer management to uh, manage the different local groups and computers on this server okay so now we have our console we need <coughs> we need before creating the reverse lookup zones we need to go to the network connection setting of this server and begin changing uh, the preferred 
DNS for every uh, uh, every one of the eight network cards that we have okay if you for example this is the first network card if we tell him properties okay and then uh, TCP IP and then properties here we can see that after installing DNS on this server here we can see that the preferred DNS it is 127.0.0.1 okay this is correct okay <coughs> because uh, this refers to the uh, IP or, or this is it is translated or it acts the same as if you type it 192.168.1.2 okay but as for not to be confused because I will install another uh, domain controller and it will have also a DNS and it will be in the alternative DNS I need everything to be uh, logic for me so I will type 192.168.1.2 okay okay it's the same if you leave it like this it will not do anything but it is better if because if you have more than one DNS so everything will can be clear so this will not be clear for anyone if this is uh, a DNS or not okay so we will type 192.168.1.2 we type it here okay uh, and this is the same so you can leave it or you can change it but I will change it because I will have another DNS so I don't not to get confused we will have this done for the eight network cards uh, that will have eight static IP version 4 uh, IPs and uh, also the uh, IP version 6 uh, IPs okay so now we will change it just a moment so let's continue here now we will uh, change the DNS okay and we'll do this for the uh, different cards now this is the IP version 6 okay actually uh, double dots 1 this is the same as 11 double dot 2 okay so this is the same as IP version 4 but in IP version 6 format okay so now we'll do this for all of the 8 network cards okay so we we'll repeat the process okay IP version 4 and then we will repeat the same okay so this, this is something only I do it for uh, uh, organizing okay so I can be uh, more organized and everything to be more uh, consistent or to be more logic okay so now this is the IP version 6 okay you can leave it as it is but I, I need to be more organized <coughs> okay and okay and close okay and then the third network card properties okay and then three two okay so we'll do this for every single network card and remember as I said before it is not a best practice to have the DHCP and DHCP, uh, DHCP and the domain controller on the same server okay so the best practice is to have only DNS and domain controller or Active Directory on one server okay and no other role to be involved or to be installed on this uh, server only domain controller or Active Directory and DNS okay for efficient uh, uh, process or for efficient uh, performance okay <coughs> for your network and for your server okay so now here we are repeating the process it's mainly a process we are repeating the process okay so we are copying uh, the IP of uh, every IP version 4 and IP version 6 so we are repeating here this is 192.168.5.2 <coughs> okay so this is it we are repeating the same process okay So are now we are repeating the process as I said before here we are typing every uh, IP address okay so double dot one it means 11 dot dot, dot zero zero two eight zero zero double two and then we repeat the same process
<coughs> so here we are uh, this is I think this is the last one okay I have I guess another the eighth network card and then we will begin uh, after doing this step we will begin creating the uh, we will create eight DNS reverse lookup zones for every subnet it will have a, D, uh, a separate DNS and a separate uh, DNS reverse lookup zone okay so we will see that in a moment so every network card will have uh, its own DNS okay and its own reverse lookup DNS okay or not only the network card I mean the subnet itself or the uh, the IP subnet okay will have uh, or every subnet will have uh, a separate DNS and a separate reverse lookup zone okay so now we will save the console and we name it star trick or star fleet command <laughs> center save then DNS okay we will reverse first we will do uh, eight reverse or DNS reverse lookup zones IP version 4 and then eight reverse lookup zones or DNS reverse lookup zones for the IP version 6 here we can see that for example this is the DNS host records with our eight uh, network cards okay IP version 6 and IP version 4 so here now we will create our uh, eight reverse lookup zones for the IP version 4 okay so we will have uh, uh, eight reverse lookup zones for the IP version 4 subnets okay and eight reverse lookup zones for the IP version 6 subnets okay so here is IP reverse lookup zone we will type the uh, subnet network okay it's 198.2.6.1 this is the, is the first one <coughs> So now we will begin creating <coughs> eight, eight reverse lookup zones, okay, IP version 4. He is asking for the network ID, okay, it will be 1, this is the first one, or the first subnet. And then we will have the second subnet, which will be number 2, 192.168.2, okay, this is the second subnet. Okay, and then we will create it, okay, two and then three until eight. This is the eight subnets, okay, that we have. And we'll create eight uh, uh, DNS reverse lookup zones for it. This is for the IP version four subnets, okay. We will repeat the process. Three, okay, and next, next, and then finish. And then we will have until eight. So we have eight subnets from one to eight, okay, and then okay so as I said before some uh, documents say that the DNS reverse lookup zone it's not that important but anyway I, I I like to create it okay okay and then four until the eight until we reach 192.168.0 or 168.8.0 this is the last subnet or the uh, the last uh, main subnet that we have Okay, and then we will do this. Find then two point one six eight point seven. Okay, this is the seventh subnet. <laughs> and then we will have the last subnet the last DNS reverse lookup zone for the last subnet IP version 4 okay and then next and then finish okay and then we'll begin creating the IP version 6 DNS reverse lookup zone okay as we can see here that there is, there is a lot of records for our static IP address for uh, the network cards on this domain controller so I think we don't need any I'm just just revising everything anyway so this is our eight DNS reverse lookup zones okay you know I'm just uh, checking everything but it's not 
it's not I don't know what I'm doing but any but it, it's not uh, I'm just checking the <coughs> the options okay so now <coughs> So now we will begin now creating the IP version 6 reverse lookup zones, okay. So here we will open our uh, Excel sheet that contains our IP version 6 uh, subnets, okay. So what we will do now, I will open this subnet, okay. So what we will do here, we will tell him this is the subnet. Okay, so we will take the 11 dot 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 slash 53 and tell him to create a DNS reverse lookup zone for it or take the IP address. So now I will show you all how we can create it. So tell him primary and then it is IP version 6. Okay, and then we will type the, the network. <coughs> okay, slash. Just a moment, it is not that. So we will go to the clipboard and paste it so slash we put slash 53 okay so this is the first subnet it's always 53 okay and then next so he automatically calculates that this subnet uh, will have uh, eight subnets so you can uh, make it with eight subnets okay so now we have so the main subnet can be a uh, uh, this he says or he calculates that this uh, IP or this subnet can be divided to eight subnets so he will make a DNS rever reverse lookup zone for each sub subnet okay from the main subnet so this is the second one <coughs> we will do this we will create also the reverse lookup zone <coughs> so here we can see that he he calculates or he knows that this IP that we are giving him with this with this subnet for the IP version 6 that this contains eight subnets okay or eight sub subnets okay so here we'll give we'll make a reverse lookup zone for every sub subnet okay so now we are doing this we will repeat the process for every uh, network or every main network main IP version 6 network <coughs> so now here what we're doing here this is the third subnet let me tell him to have a new one, okay. IP version 6, okay. Okay, and then slash 53, okay. This is the uh, subnet mask or the perfix, okay. It's called the DNA, the subnet perfix. <coughs> as we can see there is a lot of DNS's okay but actually because we have the DHCP on this server so we have a lot of subnets and a lot of DNS's for these subnets okay but if we have the DHCP on another separate server we will not have all of this DNS's created okay <coughs> anyway so we will have uh, IP version 6 <coughs> this is the fourth subnet okay and then next next finish and then we will go to the uh, fifth I think this is the USS Certus uh, subnet and we will add it <coughs> next on IP version 6 reverse lockup zone and then <coughs> We'll copy on the clipboard. Here is another thing uh, concerning the uh, Hyper-V. You cannot copy and paste from the host to the guest directly. He will not do this. Okay. So you need to go to the clipboard and then tell him to paste. In VM Workstation Pro, you can copy and paste directly without having to uh, open an option or open a menu and then tell him to paste. Okay. This is done automatically in Hyper-V environment. Uh, sorry, uh, done in VM Workstation Pro environment. Hyper-V, you need to tell him to clipboard and then paste. Okay. 
<coughs> IP version 6 and then this is I think this is the seventh maybe subnet let's we'll see this is the maybe the seventh subnet and then next and finish <coughs> okay and then Okay, and then okay. And then this is the eight subnet. Fifty three. Okay, and then finish. Then this is the eight subnet. Next, and then. This is the last one, IP version 6. And then we will have the uh, 8 subnet. Okay. Then I can send and finish. So we have all of our subnets now having uh, 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 subnets IP version 4 or IP version 6 all have uh, reverse DNS reverse lookup zones for every subnet. So we can see everything is working. Then we need to begin to uh, creating different Active Directory uh, users, groups, organization, and units using PowerShell script. So we should begin. So here we'll begin using my PowerShell script. Okay. So I have a folder, okay, created, okay. What we're doing here now, here I am making something called, we'll go to the C Windows folder and then we will copy uh, by default uh, the Windows or the group policy uh, templates, okay, uh, for the domain controller or for the domain, it is put in C Windows policy definitions folder, okay. What we will do now, we will create something called uh, group policy central store okay we will create it okay how we will create it by copying the templates uh, of the group policy from the C windows uh, policy definitions folders will take a copy of it and put it in a folder or another folder called, uh, called C windows sysvol policies we will put the policy definitions folder we will copy it and put it in C windows sysvol policies we put it there okay and after doing this, the location which is called C Windows says vol policies policy definition. This will be called Group Policy Central Store Location. Okay, so this will be the new location for the domain controller or for the domain uh, group policies. Again, to repeat, the default uh, group policies that are applied to the domain or the Active Directory, its default location it's C Windows. Uh, policy definitions we will change the location or we will tell the active directory to get its group policy okay from another location which is called c windows uh, sysvol then policies then policy definitions okay and we'll copy of course as i said before we'll copy the folder and put it in this location and by doing this the new location will be called uh, group policy central store location there is a lot of benefits from doing this process please refer to my DC Comics lab, Mass Effect lab, and Marvel and DC United lab. I have discussed what is a group policy central store location, what is the benefits of doing this process. It has a lot of benefits and a lot of uh, things, okay? So we are, technically we are telling the Active Directory to get its group policy uh, templates from another location, different than the default one, okay? So here what we'll do, policy definitions okay copy you can go to the folder see windows says vol policies or you can go to a shared because this folder is shared as says vol so you can go to the share folder uh, named says vol it is the same as going to see windows says vol and put uh, the uh, folder in it or the policy definitions in it so we'll go to says vol and then we go to star trek local Okay, and then to policies and then after copying the folder policy definitions we will paste it here so this will be called this location 
be called uh, Active Directory Group Policy Central Store. Okay. So now we will begin our process of, uh, and after that, what I have done, this is something called templates. Okay, this I have some group policy templates of my own. So we all know that the Active Directory will get its uh, group policy that will be applied to the domain. Okay, from the location C Windows uh, policy definitions, uh, C Windows says vol policies policy definition. Okay. This concerns the Windows. These group policies are applied to the Windows environment. Okay, but what if we need to make a group policy uh, uh, for the Firefox, for the Google Chrome, for some programs? Okay, for example, if you need, if all of your uh, uh, PCs you need, for example, when uh, and we have all on this PCs in this domain have, for example, Firefox installed on it. You need every user when he opens his Firefox, he need him to have. Uh, a specific website to be as a home page okay this uh, can be done okay using a group policy template for the firefox okay the windows or the default domain the default group policy templates which are installed or or which is uh, accompanying the windows or the installation of the windows it only contains the group policies concerning the windows environment if you need to have a group policy uh, uh, to uh, to work with the Firefox environment, you need to go to the Firefox or you need to go to the website of Firefox and uh, download the group policy template for the Firefox and then take it and put it in the new location of the group policies for Windows, okay, which is C Windows uh, uh, Sysvol uh, policies and then policy definitions, okay. So in this location, it only contains C Windows, uh, C Windows says vol policies, policy definitions. This folder contains the Windows group policies only. If you need to control the Firefox, you need to download the Firefox uh, uh, group policy templates from the internet and put it in the C Windows policies uh, policy definitions or C Windows uh, says vol policies policy definitions. Okay, uh, so this folder I have a folder I have already uh, a collection of group policy templates okay it contains the group policy templates for firefox for google chrome for classic shell a lot of things so i will copy this group policy templates and put it in the new location of our windows group policies folder okay which is c windows says vol policies policy definitions so by doing this this folder which is c windows says vol policies policy definitions this folder will contain group policy templates for the windows for the firefox for the google Chrome, and a lot of things okay so now we will do this <coughs> <coughs> copy and then we'll go to the folder okay policies policy definitions and then we will paste it so this folder will contain the windows uh, server policy definition uh, po uh, windows server group policies okay and the firefox group policies and everything okay so you can from your group policy management console we can <coughs> configure group policies uh, to uh, control the windows environment to control the firefox environment to control the google chrome environment and everything okay <coughs> So here he finds some duplicate files, so I tell him to skip. This is mainly the files of the Windows, okay, or the group policy templates for the Windows. So I don't need them because it's already there. I need only the Firefox and other group policy templates to be added. So now we have everything there. Now I need to begin uh, uh, working with the group policies, okay. Or so begin working with the uh, installing or creating Active Directory objects. Now what I will do, this is a pr program called Idle Logoff. Idle Logoff, it is a program that logs off the machine after a certain amount of time. If you tell him, you specify, for example, for the program that after uh, 3000 seconds, if the machine, uh, there is no activity on the machine, you can log off uh, of the user on the server after 3000 seconds. Okay, so this is something called Idle Logoff. Idle Logoff, we will put it in a folder 
by the same name so the program is called idlogof.exe and we will put it in a folder called idlogof and then we have our active directory login script this is active directory login script a script will be applied to every user that logs in uh, uh, in the domain for the first time okay we will tell him in the script to go to the folder names idlogof and to go to the program called idlogof and initialize it or run it and make it monitor the background okay of the pc and after 3000 seconds of idle activity it will log off the user okay i have discussed this in the previous video and the previous video on the on the introduction okay, so this is uh, what i'm doing now i am copying or making a folder so in our active directory login script we are telling him to go to this location which is c idle log of idle log of the txe and run the program okay and tell it to monitor the pc until it is idle for a certain amount of time then you can log off the user okay so now <coughs> we have done this we need to uh, begin now working with the active directory we need to begin installation or begin working with the uh, active directory this is the active directory login script okay this is will be applied to every active directory user in the domain so where to put it okay for example we need to have a login script to be applied to every user in the domain so you can put it in a folder or in a shared folder called net login or you can put it in a folder called c windows sysvol net login okay but this is simpler you can put the script by uh, uh, right click or opening run and then put the domain and then go to the net login so we'll put the script here by putting the script here every active directory user in your domain okay will have this script applied to him okay so the active directory knows to go to this folder and apply this script to every active directory user okay so just a moment guys so let's continue guys here we are saying yeah this is before we will put the login script here if you right click and edit okay here we can see that the login script here tell him to start the program called idle log off okay and to log off the machine after 3000 seconds so this is why we created the folder came idle log off and put the program in it okay because every active directory user will need to uh, log in and initialize the program for him okay so this is one thing and then we need to make sure for example this is a couple of uh, registry keys to be applied to every user when he logs into the domain okay so these scripts will be in a folder on the server called backgrounds and these backgrounds are shared okay and this is the name of the server okay this is actually not the name of the server this is from another lab or a previous lab so we need to give him the location of the server or the name of the server and then the folder that it is shared on this server so we need to change it okay so now we will do this so here i'll take the name of the server or we'll type it okay so the login script will do a couple of things i have discussed it in the introduction video it will do a couple of things and so we need to after doing this we need to share this folder we have a folder in the d called backgrounds we need to share it okay so the script can go and access or the script can be applied okay or the user can go and run this registry keys okay so here we're doing this okay and then so here we are preparing ourselves before <coughs> before creating the uh, ac different active directory objects users computers and so okay so we are preparing our uh, group policy templates location we are uh, uh, preparing our dns reverse lookup zones okay okay i think this is just a moment so now what i do after doing all of this we need what to do we need to take a checkpoint okay so we need to make a checkpoint okay so this is after installing the active directory so now we have make a checkpoint before creating the active directory now we will make a checkpoint after creating the active directory so now we have our environment settled and working 
now we will begin in the upcoming video uh, creating the different Active Directory users groups and we'll go further by creating group policies and then we will begin further by creating the DHSP and everything so here we him to creating after the Active Directory okay so here it will take a little bit of time but here we are ensuring that our environment it is uh, uh, correctly installed the DNS is a very important part in the domain so we need to we have it uh, configured correctly okay so uh, this is all for the video I don't need it to be more because I think I have one hour now okay it's about 50 minutes okay so I don't need to uh, I think maybe we can go further no anyway we will do this I will end this video and then we will have a separate video the upcoming uh, video or the I will have another video for uh, discussing more so this is all for the video the upcoming video will begin creating the different active directory users groups and so on so using a powershell script of this video is informative for you all and i would like to thank you all for viewing thank you so much